Hey, what's up? My name is Stephen Mayu, and in this video series, I walk you through the React challenges at FreeCodeCamp.com. We're doing project number two, Build a Camper Leaderboard, and we have just finished building out our app component. In the last video, uh, I, took a, uh, I took a detour, and I explained the differences between um, regular old functions and fat arrow functions, which are available to us in uh, the new ES6 syntax. And basically, we need to use a fat arrow function right here in order to make this dot set state work. Um, if you're unfamiliar with that concept, and if you want to understand, you know, why, what's going on, uh, go back to the last video, and uh, I give a brief, you know, explanation of it uh, in the console. Okay, so now we have built out our app level component. And uh, let's go to the browser. And uh, we only have you know, a header, a couple of buttons, and that's it. Uh, looking at the finished project, uh, I'd say that we have two more components left to build out. We need a component for the table itself. And then um, we need uh, you know, a component for each of these items right here. OK, so uh, let's go ahead and let's just build it out. Okay, uh, we're going to have to create a new component. So I'm going to create new file, and I'm going to call it. Um, I'm going to call it a camper camper list .js. Okay. Uh, now for this component, um, you know, I think I only need to return some JSX. I don't need component level state. Uh, I don't think I need any lifecycle methods or helper methods. So this is a good use case for a functional component and not a class-based component. So let's get started. We're going to import React from, oops, from React. Okay. And I'm going to uh, make this a functional component. So let's say const uh, camper list. Okay. And we're going to make this a fat error function, actually. So let's give it an argument of props. And I'll explain what that is exactly in just a moment. Fat arrow. OK, great. And uh, inside here, I'm just going to return. And uh, let's just make sure uh, everything is working first. Uh, I'm just going to do some text. Uh, this uh, is the camper list. Okay, great. And now I need to export this. So export default camper list. Wonderful. And I'm going to go back to my app right here. And I'm going to import my camper list. Here I'm exporting it. And now I'm going to import it here. So import camper list from okay now the camper list component is in the same directory as my app component so i'm going to do dot slash that means the current directory and then camper underscore list uh, and i could do uh, you know dot js but uh, it's optional you know if it's a js javascript file i don't need to put dot js all right so there we go and now i am going to put this component inside of the render method of, uh, of this right here. So really simple to do. I'm just going to put this here. I'm going to put camper list, make it a self-closing tag. I'm going to save all these things. And let's just make sure everything is wired up correctly. I'm going to refresh the page. OK, cool. This is the camper list. Great. Everything is working. Now, um, we're going to have two possible lists, depending on, you know, the view or the button that we press. Let's go back to the page here. All right. So we've got our recent campers or at the top people in the last 30 days. And that's one list. And we have all time campers in the list updates. Now, we need to be able to communicate to our different props. Our app level component, it loaded the data uh, with our component will mount method. And so it updated the uh, state level component, the, the state, uh, the component level state, and, and we have all the data right here. So we need to be able to communicate from our app component to our camper list. We need to pass down uh, the correct uh, data, either recent campers data or all time campers data to our camper list component. But how can we do that? Well, we do it 
through props. And that's where this argument comes in, props. Um, in props, it works really well with a parent and child relationship. And that's what we have going on right here. Camper list is nested inside of the app component. So that makes app the parent and camper list the child. And that kind of downwards or trickle down, you know, communication, uh, you know, not to be all political here, but that trickle down communication from a parent to a child is really simple. We do it through props. So I'm going to give uh, this component here a prop, uh, and I'm just going to call it campers. So campers, that's the name of the prop, okay? And anytime we want to reference like a JavaScript variable or do some sort of JavaScript expression, we use the curly braces, okay? So now uh, I need to give it either, you know, um, the recent campers or the all-time campers? Well, that's really easy to do. We're going to say this dot state, okay? And then I am going to um, write this, this dot state dot um, current, what is it? Current view, right. View. Okay, and this is just a bit of JavaScript magic. So this dot state dot current view will evaluate to a string, and that's either recent campers or it could be uh, all time campers. All right, depending on you know what button that I click, and this evaluates to a string. So inside of these brackets here is a string, and we can access the values of an object either with dot notation, like we're doing here, like this dot state dot current view or we can use um, we can use brackets and we can use brackets if uh, if we pass it a string that corresponds to uh, a property of that object so the props that we send to our child component camper list uh, will you know update dynamically when we click uh, one of these buttons and if I go here I'm just going to console.log. Let's just see what our props are. So console.log. This, uh, or let's say these are the props. And I'm just going to say props like that. Okay. Let's have a look. I'm going to save this. Okay. And let's go to our application. Let's get our console right there. Okay. And let's refresh. Okay, good. And it says, these are the props. These are the props. Oh, it, uh, it, uh, uh, it uh, refreshed. Uh, that's actually a good point. Let me, uh, let me do it again. All right, I'm gonna refresh, all right? So here, okay, good. So here, these are the props, okay? And we have campers, okay? So where does, where does this campers come from? Okay, props is an object. So where does campers come from? Well, campers comes from right here. Okay, so we're giving our functional component props. The name of this props is campers. So it shows up as a property on the props object. Now, initially, let me do it again. I'm gonna refresh, okay? This is getting logged out once. Initially, that array of campers is zero. Uh, but uh, after a moment, after it fetches the uh, JSON data from the API endpoint, it uh, logs it again, and that um, campers uh, data now has a, a lot of things in it. Okay, so that, that's something to be aware of in, in React. Sometimes um, your components are going to re-render um, anytime uh, actually, anytime actually your state gets updated. Um, it, then, then your components are going to re-render. So, so think about this for a moment. Okay, um, anytime your state is updated, your components are going to re-render. So, initially, our recent and all-time, uh, 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 like you know, uh, properties on, on the state object, they're initially blank, and then component will mount it. To go it goes ahead and makes those requests, and it updates our recent and all-time campers using this dot set state. Well, the state gets, you know, updated and the component, you know, renders. So 
this initially renders and well you know this dot state the dot you know whatever it's it's going to be initially blank but then after some moment of time you know once the, the uh, axios returns us the response from the server it's going to update uh, our this dot state objects and uh, and it's going to re-render this again and that's why we get uh, two of them now if we click the buttons we'll see that it changes and we can click it again and so it's changing and it's changing and it's changing so I'm gonna click the button let me just clear it out I'm gonna click the button and now I have given it the all-time campers um, object to my props and now it's the reason campers back and forth back and forth like that okay so um, that's what's happening with props and it's just a very simple way to pass down uh, information from the parent to the child um, you can't do it the other way around the child cannot very easily communicate to the parent I mean you could make it happen with a with some sort of callback or some asynchronous programming but that can get really messy and you know, sibling components, they can't really communicate to each other easily. And that's when you need something like Flux or Redux uh, in your application. But for us, we don't need Flux or Redux right now uh, because we don't need to communicate child to parent or, you know, sibling components together. Okay, so let's go back to our camper list. And you know what props are now? By the way, props are available to you in functional and class-based components. So in functional components, you just say props dot you know campers and boom, great. But in a class-based component, you just have to say this dot props dot you know whatever. So campers in this case, and that's all you have to do. Uh, by the way, a little bit of ES6 syntax, okay. Uh, I could, you know, write something like this. I could say const campers equals props dot campers. Okay, I could do that. Or, 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 or to make this much easier, I can just get rid of this line, and I can do this inside. I can give it some curly braces and just write campers. Okay, so in here, okay, we normally put props, and props is an object, um, but I can put curly braces in there and pass in a, an argument with the same name uh, as, a, as a property from the object that would go in here, and now I can, I can use campers, you know, just, just normally, um, and campers is equal to props.campers. Okay, and uh, you know I don't have to you know, create a new variable. That's just a bit of some ES6 uh, magic. All right, so we need to create a table, a table with um, you know with the headings and, and all that stuff. So uh, this is just going to be a little bit of HTML, nothing special here. I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste it. So it's going to return a table with a with a class name, a table, and table stripe. That just comes from Bootstrap. It's you know nothing special. Um, and okay, so this is our header, and this is our table row and our table uh, header. You know, uh, sort of uh, you know things going on right here. And here in the uh, T body, okay, this is where we're going to actually put our um, uh, our you know camper list items okay um, so let me just uh, let me just go ahead and save this make sure everything is working as it should okay great and it looks like we have um, our our table showing up there's no data in it yet um, but I guess you can kind of guess like what we're gonna do now so we're going to nest a camper list item inside of this component and uh, well let's do that uh, actually uh, we're going on 14 minutes right here so let's let's stop right here that's a good idea in the next and final video we're going to build out the camper list item component. So we're going to need some information uh, right here between our T body tags. Um, and I think this is a good stopping point. So let's stop here. In the next video, we'll finish up this project and uh, we will build out the camper list item component. So I will see you in the next video. Bye. Boop.